Baiju, 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and in this video of Concept Bites, we are going to be exploring the topic, water as a resource. Now this right here is a very important subtopic from the chapter Land, Soil, Water, Natural Vegetation and Wildlife Resources. Now of course we have covered the ideas of land as a resource and soil as a resource in our previous videos. In case if you have not checked those videos out, I would strongly recommend that you do. Links are available in the description below. Today of course we are going to be describing and looking at the topic water as a resource. Today we will be understanding why water is important to us and how over a period of time water has been exploited and what are the steps we can do in order to conserve water. So whenever we talk about water, we know that water is often referred to as the elixir of life, right? Which means that water is super essential for us to survive, especially for living organisms. Now from our previous chapter, resources, we have also understood that water is a renewable natural resource. That means that water is something that can be renewed or it can be replenished over a period of time. Yes? Now, of course, we know that when we talk about how much water is available to us, more three-fourths of the earth is covered with water. Which is why we always say that water or earth is known as a water planet. Now, when we talk about water, right, broadly we see that there are two categories of water. We see that we have fresh water and then, of course, we have marine water, right? Now, why is these two categories important? Because we need to also understand the distribution of water. Now water, even though three-fourths of the earth is covered with water, we see that 97.3% are present in the oceans. Now we know that the oceans and the seas have or are called as marine water sources or we say that they are salty, right? And we know that this is not ideal for human consumption, leaving you with less than 3% of freshwater resources. Now in that also we see that 2.7% right is present. Yes, we see that nearly 2.7 of it is going to be your fresh water sources. Out of that a large percentage of it is present in glaciers and ice caps in the polar mount in the polar regions and in the mountains. Which leaves you with about 1% of actual water that we can consume. And they exist in the form of groundwater, rivers, lakes, yes, all of these sources that are there. Now this 1% that is available fresh water is exhaustively used. When I say exhaustively means it is used very intensively for agriculture, it is used for industries and of course for household purposes. Now understand that fresh water that is there is a precious substance that is there on earth. And understand that water that is there can neither be added, right? You cannot add more water or neither can you subtract the water, right? So you cannot subtract how much water that is there. And we see that the volume of water that is there on earth will always remain constant. Now you must be wondering, ma'am, what are you talking about addition and subtraction? Which means that I cannot make more water or neither can I make water disappear, right? The volume wise, I cannot make it disappear. And this happens because of a process in place which is the water cycle. And only how much water, right, that is available to us keeps changing or rather I will use the word abundance, right? The abundance will vary or how much water is available that will vary because of the water cycle because of the cyclic motion that is in place. Now we know that the water cycle of course has four steps involved in it where it starts with evaporation where the water that is there will, if liquid water will evaporate and of course it will turn into vapor. Now from here of course at the temperatures there the water would condense into droplets resulting in the formation of clouds and eventually when the clouds become heavy they will precipitate right all the droplets will fall down and of course initially whatever falls down they will percolate or they will seep through the soil and they will get collected as groundwater, right? And we know that this is a cyclic motion in place, which is what we understand as water cycle. But despite all of this, if the volume of water has not been subtracted or neither has been added, it's just that it's been in circulation, why is it that in the present day time, we are struggling to find water, right? I am sure you would have heard of this word water scarcity. Now, water scarcity is a condition 
where there is in insufficient fresh water sources that is there to meet human and environmental needs of a given area. Now you'll be telling me, ma'am, water is not getting subtracted. Then why is water scarcity happening? Now water scarcity happens because the fresh water that is available to us, we are destroying the quality of fresh water, which means that over a period of time, we are damaging the quality and we are making it unusable. Which is why we see that there is no longer proper resources which we can utilize for consumption. That is what results in fresh water or that, that is what results in water scarcity, right? Now, this can happen due to variation in precipitation. Now, like I said, the volume of water is in circulation, right? The abundance may vary. Now, this could happen due to variation. Now, this could happen in two cases. One, due to climatic differences, it could lead to drought conditions, right? Or the opposite end of it is when there is extreme of it, which could also result in flood, right? So, variation in how much rainfall is available in a given area can contribute to water scarcity. Next and most important one is water contamination, right? So, of course, over a period of time, right, there has been untreated or partially treated, untreated or partially treated sewage yes sewage and lot of waste chemicals right and uh, what, what do you say agricultural chemicals industrial runoffs right all of them they will be sent into the water right and of course these chemicals that are there they will be you know rich in nitrates nitrites and various other chemicals that will damage the quality of water now it can no longer be consumed then of course there is over exploitation of water at times and this is a very very common thing right now sometimes small things like when you are brushing your teeth opening the sink and leaving it as opening the tap and leaving it as it is that in itself is an over exploitation and wastage of water so whatever fresh water is available to us that can be used that is also getting over exploited it is not being used wisely right and of course this happens because there's also an increasing demand for by the population the population is an increase water is in high demand right not only just for household chores but for agriculture because there's in increase in food demands also, right? So more amount of water is necessary for irrigation as well. So the demand has started to increase. Now you have also started to destroy the quality. Then how much water is actually usable? Very little portion, eventually leading to water scarcity. As a matter of fact, in places, uh, especially in Amreli city in Saurashtra, we see that there is a water market as well, where they have to purchase water, right? So this right here is a, you know, what do you say? This is where we are heading towards and it is a, not a very pleasant road that we are taking right now, right? Which is why we see that across the world also, there are many such similar cases, especially in Africa, West Asia. We see that there are already parts of the world facing shortages in water and country, especially countries that are located in climatic zones that are susceptible to drought. That means there could be changes in the amount of rainfall that comes. That can also lead to water scarcity. And we also see that changes in climate can also impact it, right? Which is why we see that there needs to be steps taken towards water conservation. Now, what can we do towards water con conservation? Step number one is to prevent water pollution from happening. Now, right now, there has been an, un what do we do directly from the industry? What happens? It directly goes into the water bodies. We don't really treat the chemical effluents or what do you say, the waste materials that we are sending into the water. So step number one is to treat these industrial effluents, right? Make sure that whatever we are sending in, we try to treat it, make sure that whatever harmful chemicals are there, we in implement processes so that we can remove them and reduce the rate at which water pollution is happening, right? And of course, regulate how much chemical fertilizers we are using. Now, of course, we know that overconsumption of fertilizers eventually from the from the agricultural fields. When they go into the water, they can destroy water bodies, right? Which is why regulating use of chemical fertilizers is also important. And the only way this is going to happen is by a increasing public awareness. People should know, if you do this, this can hamper the quality of water and tomorrow that is going to be a problem for us only and nobody else, right? So improving public awareness is also important. Now, apart from that, we also see that there needs to be effective ways of irrigation. 
So right now, even with irrigation, there has been a large consumption of water, right? And there is no way in which the demand for food is going to go down. There, if there is a population, there is going to be equal demand for food. So the only way in which we can tackle this problem now is to make sure that there are smart ways in which we irrigate, right? So making sure that there are canals which are present, right? Making sure that there are sprinkler irrigation or drip irrigation which uses water wisely and does not waste too much water, thereby ensures in water conservation. And of course, in order to make sure that there is no surface runoff, right? So there's a lot of surface runoff that comes from these agricultural fields. So we can make sure that the surface runoffs are channeled, are, you know, uh, they are all made to go into channels wherein it can effectively move in and can be collected. And along with that, practice rainwater harvesting. Now, rooftop rainwater harvesting is something which is very, very popular, which is the process of collecting rainwater at the rooftops and all that rainwater can be collected in a tank, right? And that can be filtered and later reused. And as a matter of fact, right, if there has been two spells of rain or two times when there's been rainfall over, it's estimated that good amount or approximately 8,000 liters of water can be, you know, conserved or captured. So this way, if you see, if households start to practice rainwater harvesting, we not only see that our dependency on the groundwater, of course, we see that whatever groundwater that is there, we see that we would actually be built, we would be collecting it and then we could be using it, right? So rainwater harvesting is also very important. So this way, if you see, we've looked at different ways in which we can conserve water at different aspects. Now, this is a very simple and easy topic, of course, because when we've been learning about water, it's a topic we've been learning from our lower grades, but now we understand the importance of conserving this water. So here is a quick homework question for all of you, where you need to let me know in the comments of this video, three ways in which we can conserve water. Now, let me know in the comments as well, because I will be checking your answers. So students, I hope you found this video helpful for a quick revision about water as a resource. Now, if you like the way we teach here at Baiju's, do not forget to hit the like button on this video. And of course, hit the subscribe button because you will get notifications for all the important videos that we do. And make sure you share it with your friends and whoever need to know about us so that they can revise and learn and score well in their exams. Thank you so much for being a part of this till the very end. Hoping to see you soon again. But up until then, take care, lots of love and bye-bye.